Hello, welcome back to History of Wine and the Vine. I'm Emily Kate. So this week we're going to do something that I've been wanting to do forever and I've been kind of compiling a lot of, I'd say, just snippets here and there for this topic and the topic is wordplay. So when I'm reading my sources, a lot of times something will come up and it'll say, um, like the root of a particular word or how we know something which is related to like the etymology of the word and I just find this endlessly fascinating and so I decided I had to share it with you guys so I've been making these little notes for months now and I've tried to boil it down um, to kind of the most amazing ones um, so I tried to do that um, today it's gonna be a bit of a series today we're just gonna focus on um, kind of words for wine and um, across different cultures. So first we're going to start with, as we kind of always do, the Bible, because it's a goodie. Um, so we're going to start with the Bible and I have um, these written down. I am no, I'm not going to attempt to read them for you, I'm just going to point to them. Um, but it's actually kind of interesting. Okay, so what I find interesting about these, so there's one, two, three, four words written here. Um, and these are the four words that are used in the Bible to kind of stand for wine. And the reason that there's four, I mean, we'll talk about this, um, but is that they're all also used in different frequencies. So the first one is used 141 times, and then for instance, the, the last one I have written down is used once. So clearly we can tell by the frequency of how often they're used, kind of how popular and common they were in just everyday speech um, in the Iron Age in Israel. So the first one um, over here, this would be uh, the most popular one. Um, it was used, like I said, 141 times and it kind of has, they, they think that it's not necessarily like a Hebrew word. It has actually roots um, in uh, Greek and uh, Roman languages. So we have um, Vinum. So I'll try. I think it's Yahin. Um, I'm sure you guys will tell me in the comments if I'm wrong, um, but uh, Yayin, then think about Vinum, uh, so kind of similar if you're thinking about um, the roots of words, and then it's also um, Olivos is in Greek, how they used to say um, wine, so that is kind of interesting. Then next you have this one over here, this is a word, you can see. Um, and this word was used 38 times. And the difference between kind of the generic wine, which was the first one, Yayin, I think, um, and then this one, which was used 38 times instead of 141, um, is that this was standing for new wine. So this was um, kind of fresh out of the um, treading floor and it um, sometimes stood for cluster. Uh, it could have been just kind of all kinds of um, words for fresh and um, new wine and it was said that this word was slightly more archaic than the first word and that it was used in kind of sophisticated language like poetry so where I mean I'm trying to think of a way to explain like a more sophisticated way of saying wine so maybe how we say the fruit of the vine I don't know how many people say that but if you were going to write a poem feeling particularly flowery you might say that um, and then next we have this one this word Very closer um, and this one was used five times in the Bible and this was more kind of about an agricultural product of the grape and kind of the things that were made from it so it could be like something that was sweetened with wine or some just anything that had to do with wine maybe or it was wine that had honey in it no matter what it wasn't necessarily pure wine it was more like a wine product so today like a wine spritzer or something like that um, where it wasn't necessarily the end all be all was wine like the generic word um, it wasn't necessarily new wine but it was just a wine product um, and then the last one over here on the bottom I'll show you that um, that one was used only once and the quote was that it was from the blood of the grape you drank your wine um, and I've seen a lot of pretty flowery uh, analyses on this and I've got to say I don't really buy into it but I'll tell you what the kind of people 
put out there um, is that because you're drinking from the blood and it's like the blood of the enemies and all this that it's fresh so they think that it was um, seasonally fresh wine and then when you're drinking blood you get energy so they thought it was strong wine now is it just me or do you think that that's a little bit of a stretch as well but that's what people say I'm just here to deliver you know <laughs> deliver what I find um, but the the interesting thing that I think about this word um, again this one right here at the bottom is that um, the kind of root of the word is also found in um, the words for fermentation and boiling so that to me is more telling than anything else that perhaps this was a very fresh new wine or maybe it was the wine when it was boiling or fermenting who knows um, but I thought it was something fun to share with you. Now next we have um, Egyptian. So obviously the Egyptian um, words are pictures. Okay, so it works. Um, pictures. So from the Phaneroic and the Greek and Roman period we have these um, images and this is, um, it's, I believe it's pronounced erp. IRP is how they spell it in all the books that I've read um, and this is how it's represented so I've seen this before these two things to me seem to be um, I just did it in highlighter so you guys could see um, these two things to me seem as though uh, similar to what I've seen grape pips or grape seeds represented as um, this to me seems to be similar to the ancient Egyptian wine press um, which I talked about in my ancient Egypt video go watch it if you haven't um, and then the basin underneath it and then that's the next one is kind of like a knife which was routinely used um, in the vineyard like a kind of um, tool so later on actually this um, this kind of word for wine was simplified um, much later on into just an image of two wine jars and I kind of think that that might have something to do with the fact that you're just more removed from it so whereas this is you know products used um, tools used to create wine by the end they were just shipping wine all over the place so you just got your you know your bottle how we think of wine as a bottle of wine but they wouldn't have thought of that you know uh, years and years ago um, so then next up what I thought was really cool that I wanted to show you was the word for um, vineyard which was often used for wine and so that one is this one right here but the reason I think that's interesting is because if you look right over here this is the word for tree and it has one kind of stake going down and then there's a tree and then the one with three stakes going down that's garden so I think it's really cool that this um, one right here actually means vineyard because it has little grape looking things underneath it so it's pretty self-explanatory um, and I think that's awesome so <laughs> uh, I hope you do too um, and uh, we will continue next week um, with the kind of word association, word play, whole theme. Like this video, um, give it a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss next week, and there'll be a week after that we're doing word play as well. So, I'll see you next time. Cheers!